the new World War 3 game is finally here. If you're lucky enough to get a bit of an early access look into the game, you'd been playing it for the last couple of days. If not, the game goes live today. Now, for those people that have played it, this video will probably either agree with your opinion of the game or disagree. That being said, anyone can leave their comments down below and I'll be sure to read them. I'm going to take a look at whether this game is all it was hyped up to be. Many people have said World War 3 is going to be a direct competitor to the Battlefield franchise. This was something that was backed up a little bit by myself, but with a little bit of scepticism as well. I took everything with a pinch of salt because Farm 51 are a small developer and they really would be doing something quite impressive to compete with the behemoths that are DICE. Main points to note before we get into this, it is of course early access, things are going to be broken, not working as intended, and hopefully improved as time goes on, and I've only just got the game. This video is serving to be a showcase of my initial impressions. I'll be coming back with another video once I've played more than just a few hours, and the gameplay in the background clearly shows I don't exactly know what I'm doing, so be patient. Future videos will be far more informative in regards to actually playing the game and doing well. This one is purely for those initial impressions and maybe it'll give you an idea on whether to buy it right away or wait a little while for some updates. The game mode that I was playing was Warzone. This is the only one available at the minute, but they will be bringing in other modes in the future. I think Recon is one that people are looking forward to as well, but when that's coming out, I'm not really too sure. Warzone is essentially a conquest sort of game mode. It felt a little bit like Battlefield 4 Conquest, but with a real hardcore twist on it and far more emphasis on teamwork and squad play. I didn't really get the exposure needed to get hooked in that regard as I was clearly playing as a new player with other players that were also fairly new to the game and didn't really know what they were doing. I feel as if this game will certainly get far more entertaining once people know what they're doing or if you're playing with maybe a group of mates and all trying to play the objective together on Discord or TS or whatever you use all together at the same time. As for the vehicles, I'm going to save this review for a different video because I don't want to give a review on those until I really get to grips with them and understand exactly what is on offer with the vehicle mechanics and customization. As you all know, I'm into my vehicles quite a lot. The trailers were very promising with World War 3 and I have had a little go in the tanks and they do seem quite fun. There's a lot to learn, I believe, with the tanking in World War 3. Now the main question people will be asking is, is World War 3 a cheap copy of Battlefield 4? I think it might be a little unfair as DICE have set the standard for a good looking FPS game so damn high and to take World War 3 as an early access game and say, is it as good as Battlefield 4? That's not really too fair because it just isn't. It's not on the same level as a Battlefield 4 game and I don't think it ever will be either because it's not going for the same sort of fast paced gameplay that we've seen in Battlefield 4. It's going to be something slightly different, a slower paced game that may be more a milsim style of FPS as opposed to an arcadey FPS that we've seen with Battlefield 4. Both have their pros and cons, both are very popular in their own right, so I just feel it's a game you have to really play and work out whether it's going to be for you or not. With World War 3 being on the Unreal Engine as well, the game won't look exactly like Battlefield 4, but it's impossible to create a modern military FPS game set in urban settings and not receive something fairly similar. As you can see from the background, the game does look quite good. I thought it ran fairly well as well for me on a 1080 and 8700K. It's a pretty decent rig and maybe people with a system that isn't quite as beefy as that will struggle. I know some people have had issues with FPS, but it's definitely not an absolute horror show. The FPS is just fine, probably on par with what we saw with Battlefield 5. As an early access game, that's fine. It will improve over time. The main thing to note with this game is it definitely has a slower pace than Battlefield 4. It cannot be compared to anything you've played in BF3 or BF4 really because it's not quite the same. It's got its own little twist on it. Many people have said it is going to be a mix between Escape from Tarkov and Battlefield 4, which I would agree with. It feels something like that. Escape from Tarkov is a game that I didn't really play myself, but I did watch a lot of Twitch streams of it. It was a game that I enjoyed watching rather than playing, and this seems to have that same sort of feeling about it, albeit with different game modes. Just to put that slow pace into 
an example for you. If you are prone behind some cover and you want to stand up to shoot an enemy who is maybe 20 meters in front of you peeking a corner, you want to get up from behind your cover and shoot them, there's a short pause as the animation finishes as you stand up before you can fire. In Battlefield 4 you just get up really fast and be firing on your way up. Whilst in this game you have to take a little bit more time as that animation takes a bit more time leading towards it being more of a military simulation game as opposed to a fast paced arcade game. These slower animations and that sort of feeling towards the game creates a slower paced game. So maybe instead of jumping up from behind cover and shooting that guy, what you do is you stay behind cover and wait until a teammate supports you. This is leading towards that team play aspect. And I really do enjoy that because it's just a different feeling to what you have in Battlefield. And with Battlefield, I can just go back and play BF4. I'm glad that this isn't just a cheap knockoff of Battlefield 4 because I wouldn't play it. I'd just go and play Battlefield 4 instead. A few points that I really like. The customization looks fantastic. As you can see from the background here, I haven't unlocked much. As I said, initial impressions, this was as I turned the game on, I recorded a couple of things. I'm further on in the game now. I've upgraded my weapon a little bit, but this is my first impression. And I just look through, easy to get used to. You can see exactly what you can do with your weapon in terms of the customization, the different cosmetics, the, uh, the sights, the grips, all those sorts of things. It looks great. And the fact you can move your gun around and just look at it in a 3D model is exactly what I want to see. And maybe Battlefield or DICE could learn something from this and possibly implement it into their Battlefield 5 game, which I really think would benefit from a customization system like this one. The visuals. It's definitely quite gritty and very much in keeping with a modern urban world war game. It's not got any oversaturated scenes that don't really fit in. World War 3 is probably going to be, if it ever does happen, which I doubt it will in real life, but hypothetically, it's probably not going to be very nice and miserable Eastern European conditions and just not a very nice urban environment is exactly what I wanted to see and this just nails it. And I've got it on high settings. I could go slightly higher to ultra, but I wanted to get a good frame rate. I think it looks great. And maybe it is on par with Battlefield 4 in terms of what it looks like. You don't have the same destruction and map variation as you had in BF4, but on the surface, it does look quite good. The final thing I'd like to talk about, we've mentioned it before, the team aspect. If you want to make a game that requires team play, then you need to do it from the ground up. This game seems to have done it from its inception, it's done it from the very beginning. They've thought about it and said, well, what we want to do is create a game that's got team play at its core, so we will create a slower paced game where everyone can work together to cap objectives. When you compare that to Battlefield 5, it's essentially a normal Battlefield game like BF3, BF4, BF1, but then with attrition tapped onto the end. Some people like it, some people don't, but you don't really know what you're going to get in BF5. In World War 3, you know it's going to be a slower paced, team play orientated game. So it's good to know that from the outset. In terms of things that need fixing, apart from the obvious, they have to improve the animations, transitions between different movements and overall performance, but they have already said that those changes will occur over time. This is of course early access and things will be fixed. I've already noticed with only playing the game for a day that there have been a couple of updates already as they've been producing bug fixes, updating the game with different things and just communicating with the audience properly. The community interaction is top notch, so expect to see some constant updates until the game is in a better state. As I said though, performance is probably the main concern as people will start to get frustrated if this doesn't see improvements. You have to have a game of this sort of nature with around 100 FPS possible on most rigs, at least 60. 60 is the lowest you could go, but 100 is acceptable, I feel, on the PC platform. Thanks for watching. Let me know your opinions down in the comments. I'll be back soon with an updated review of this game and some proper gameplay where I've actually had time to get to grips with the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.